All right, so a fun one here today. Let me see if I can't straighten that out a little bit. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, pretty good. All right, so uh, working with a lady. Uh, she has a pretty significant amount of money in the Fidelity Growth Stock Mutual Fund, FDRGX. If I can find my PVC, FDRGX. And here it is, what's December 10th or 11th? All right, so we have a few days left of the end of the year to decide things we can do. Now, the issue in this regard is that this lady's got 48,000 shares, all right? So 48,000 shares is basically a million bucks. All right, so we got a lot of shares to contend with, and the, the account has been, she's had this account for a long, long time. All right, so the question is, A, is it a fund worth keeping? Is it overly risky? All these different things, and the first, and it's just all that is, is, is fine, and Fidelity Fund is, is fine. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, we have a 1% turnover, TO is 1% turnover, which means it doesn't generate a lot of capital gains. Uh, expense ratio is a moderately low, when I say moderately low, on the lower end, uh, 0.85. Had the same fund manager for 21 years, it's five-star rating. And yes, I do pay attention to Morningstar ratings, and you should too, all right, without question. Five-star rating, it had to be hard to get a five-star rating with an expense ratio through the roof or a turnover rate very high. So I look at these three things, or four things, I said, okay, so far so good. Um, all that makes sense to me. But the question that we have is, and this is where you need to do your own research and investigation is, what is it gonna pay out? Because that's a different story, my friends. What's it gonna pay out? Got my calculator, okay, good, do have my calculator. Uh, by end of the year, uh, and can you do anything to offset some of that payout uh, with capital loss distributions and whatnot? And here's where the it gets a little bit dicey. All right, so in this case, 48,000 shares of, of Fidelity FDRGX. All right, so that's, uh, again, that's about a million dollars. It's gonna have a 5.5% capital gain distribution. Uh, I think it's coming out December 18th, I think is the day, uh, the, not the X day, you know, the date of distribution. Is that what it's called? Like, either way, it's gonna pay out, I think on the 18th, or some of that. 5.5% um, capital gain distribution. So that's basically $1 per share. That's all long-term capital gains, by the way. There is no short-term. If it's short-term, it'd be even worse. So short-term, cap long-term capital gains, $1 per share. That means $48,000 of long-term capital gains. So we know right there out of the gate, this fund will generate, let me get a green marker to, it's going to generate $48,000 of long-term capital gains. And that'll, eh, she'll still probably be in the 15% of the 12. No, she'll definitely be in the uh, 22. So that's a, at 15%. That's what the tax is. So she will have a capital gain of $48,000, of which is going to be taxed. It's going to cost her $7,200 in taxes right there. And we'll use that for red. $7,200 in taxes. All right, so she's going to get $48,000 of long-term capital gain. Thankfully, there's no short-term capital gain. It's going to cost her $7,200 taxes. But here's the other part. It, last year, it paid $0.84 cents a share in dividends. The year before that, it paid $0.81 cents a share in dividends. Hard to say how much. So let's just say it's going to pay, uh, we'll say $0.85, we'll say 85 cents a share in dividend. I'll call you purple. Uh, and to, at the end of the year, I, I couldn't, I didn't look that hard. I couldn't see how much it paid, but uh, the last two years, 81 cents, 84 cents. So we have a pretty good idea it's going to pay, I would think, another 80 odd cents. And I didn't see the dividend, dividend distribution rate, um, but I'm just going to go off this. So if I'm wrong, that's fine. But at the end of the day, I'm telling a story here about what you need to be looking at. So 85 cents times 48,000 shares. That's going to be another $40,000 in dividends. Presumably is all qualified, I hope. Uh, so that's $40,000 of dividends, which equals 0.15%. And we times that by 0.15. That's a 61.20 in cost in uh, taxes on those dividends. All right, tax. So we have 7,260, what's that? $13,320 in total taxes on this fund alone. Tax. Now, 
The question is, let's just say we haven't hit the, uh, the, the X date where you can still get out of the fund uh, before it pays its dividends. If you can still get out of the fund before it pays, you might want to do that. But the problem in this case is we have 48,000 shares, which is trading at a million bucks. Her cost basis is something like 400,000, maybe $500,000. So if she were to sell this guy, she would pay long-term capital gains on the entirety of that $500,000 gain. So that's, that's just simply non-starter. So in this case with Fidelity uh, Growth Stock Fund, she's gonna have $13,000 in taxes on $48,000 of long-term capital gains, $40,000 of uh, dividends. Let's just say that's $90,000 of income this one fund generates on a million bucks. That's basically a 9% payout rate. 9% payout raise, and there is something you can do about it, which is what we talked about. She has a couple funds that have losses in them, all right? Now, not huge amounts, but she does have one that had about $21,000 of loss and another with 15,000. And I told her to sell those puppies without question. That's $36,000 that can come off right off the top of that guy right there. So now she has $48,000 long-term capital gains, but she offsets that by $36,000 of losses that she has. So now she won't have $7,200 of taxes. It'll be 15% of what's that, uh, 12,000 bucks. You know, give, give or take about $1,800. So if you re reduce her tax it right there uh, by uh, $5,000, $5,500 without doing anything to the portfolio. Not at all. Everything is still the same. She still has this fund right here. She hasn't taken any gains off that from selling it. And on top of that, she's got rid of a couple of losers. And both those funds are actually pretty good. But if you have a loss, you should. You should take it before a year end to offset some of these right here. And if I may, this 5.5% distribution amount, that ain't much, my friends. That's not bad. I'm looking at Fidelity right here. And I, I talked about this before with Fidelity. But I was looking at Fidelity, their year-end distributions. I mean, some of these guys are going to have significant year-end distributions into the 10, 20, uh, 15%. I don't think it's 15. But I remember in the 10%. Uh, and more, and some of them, like Fidelity Growth and Income, uh, they have short-term capital gains and long-term capital gains, uh, and the short-term capital gains comes out as ordinary income. So some of these guys are gonna have hefty, uh, in fact, here's the, uh, the Fidelity Inflation Protected Bond Index Fund, it has 12 cents a share of short-term capital gains. Uh, it's only trading at $9.59 as of uh, October 31st. So uh, I mean, that, that is, you know, I don't wanna say sizable, but it was at 1%, maybe 1.5%. Of, uh, of the portfolio. So if you owned $100,000, that's, uh, was that 1,500 bucks in short-term capital gains? Now that's taxes ordinary income. That may or may not be, make or break you, but remember that 48,000 plus is 40,000. Uh, 40, so again, we'll just say that's 90,000 total. That adds on to your social security. That adds on to your other dividends and capital gain distributions that you have. If you have a pension that adds on to that, it all adds up. And in this case, she's a single taxpayer. Um, you know, it doesn't take much to get over the hump in terms of your Medicare premiums. In fact, let's take a look. Ah, uh, shoot. I don't know if I have it here. Let's take a look what the Medicare premiums in this scenario would be because uh, off the top of my head, I can't remember. So we go to Google. Bear with me just a second, my friends. We're going to go to Medicare, Medicare premiums. I think it's Irma premiums. High income premium, Medicare premiums, high income. There we go. So we're going to look at the Medicare premiums for high income. And this is straight from ssa.gov. And I'll put a link in the show notes. And it's a 16 pager. It's a wonderful, wonderful resource. I'm telling you, I don't know why I didn't have it up there already. Uh, so if you're a single uh, individual, uh, is that single? I can't tell. Yeah, here we go. So if you're individuals with modified adjusted gross income above uh, $107,000, your premiums on your Medicare Part B will go up $133.90 a month and your premiums in Part D will go up $33.60. So in this case, just right there alone. And modified adjusted gross income is what? It's member tax-free income plus, plus any of your other income that you have as well. So she has $90,000 right there alone, which will give her taxable Social Security of... Uh, I mean, what her taxable Social Security would be, essentially 85% of her Social Security would be subject to taxation. And plus, she's going to have other capital gains and dividend distribution. So she'll easily be 
above the, I don't say easily, but she certainly will be uh, probably in the 107 to 133 tax bracket, a modified just gross income realm for Medicare premiums, which means her Part B and Part D will increase uh, by double. Uh, she'll have a doubling. If she gets above 160, uh, they'll increase by triple. And so, I mean, just from this alone, without taking her losses, uh, that could really, really increase her Medicare premium. So the whole point of this, find your losses, where do you have them, sell those suckers. Right? Look, I don't know your circumstance, I don't know, but I'm telling you right now, if you're on Medicare and or Social Security, um, and you can be on one without the other. I mean, you can be on Social Security without Medicare. You can be on Medicare without Social Security. That's a fact. So, but you know, when he hits seventy, you're both, most likely on both. Anyway, if you have that, we have a, a loss. Don't just sit there and say it's going to come back. It's going to come back. Well, okay, wait thirty. Sell that sucker. Take the loss off for this tax year and come back and buy it again thirty days from now if you think it's going to come back. I mean, I think that's a bad proposition. But hey, if you're that convinced, at least take the loss before year end. My goodness, you can't have for ninety thousand dollars just floating around out there. Going to affect your other stuff too, especially after having a lot, a big long uh, sell off the last few months. Uh, you have opportunity to do that for sure to uh, dis to limit your distribution effects that can affect other sources of income. Get it done, my friends. Get it done ASAP. You don't have much longer in the year, so make sure you look at that. Anyway, if you have questions, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, thumbs up, comments, the whole thing helps below. So don't forget to uh, let me know what you thought. The blog is heritagewealthplanning.com, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.